sounds good. Okay, we we should be recording. It says it's recording. So, Yay, hi, hi, Amanda. Thank <laughs> you so much for uh, for doing this uh, with me. Of course. I um, as you know, I have the the Moms Homeschool and uh, Homeschool Switch Gears, the Moms Income Lab group, and yes. uh, the purpose of the group is to help moms uh, figure out how to kind of find their thing. And mm -hmm. I, you know, you and I met what a couple of years ago when our kids mm -hmm. did the, uh, the music video together. Yes. And uh, yeah, when I met fun. you, you had two Facebook groups. You had uh, yeah. Buckhead Snobs mm -hmm. and East Cobb Snobs. Um, I never owned East Cobb Snobs. East Cobb Snobs uh, started at all, and then a few moms had branched out. So I ran. Uh, Buckhead snobs. Okay, and awesome. There was a Roswell snobs and a, an Alpharetta snobs and and so on. Yeah, and I still run the Buckhead. It's kind of a Buckhead Midtown. Okay, snobs so as well. um, and so were you a stay-at-home mom at that point, and you were running this? I was. I um had moved. We'd moved here from Ohio. Um, uh -huh. shortly, Cruz wasn't even walking yet. He was, I think, around nine months. Um, and I had been in marketing and public relations at Children's Hospital in Columbus, mm -hmm. uh, there at the Nationwide Children's Hospital. And when I moved down here, I just kind of, that was the first time we had moved away um, from home. Both Sean and I grew up in Ohio. And I wanted to kind of get a lay of the land before I went back to work. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I had reached, I had looked up a couple of Facebook mom groups just to try to find activities and things to do with the kids. Um, at that time, I was living in Smyrna, and I found a really cool group called Macaroni Kid, yes. um, who's run by Michelle Cisco, who's also a publicist. And um, we had gotten, we had started talking and got to know each other, and she had um, found out about my history in writing and, and marketing and public relations and wanted me just to help her out with um, with her page. She does a e-newsletter once a week uh -huh. uh, to a very targeted audience. I think she's got 10 or 20,000 moms on mm -hmm. her particular newsletter. And again, those are kind of all around the city, different hubs of the same um, newsletter, but are more specific to area. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you know, I can't pay you a lot, but I can give you free tickets to these events. And then in turn, you will write a, a write about them. So I took yeah. the kids to the Disney on ice and all really, really fun stuff. Um, at the time, that was kind of her side gig to make money. Right. Um, she made money off of um, uh, ad sales that were on mm -hmm. uh, the website and the newsletter. Um, but she was also um, an entertainment publicist. So she had me come on. Um, like an associate. Uh -huh. um, so I helped her. She at the time was repping um, an actor from Walking Dead. Um, so yeah. when he had some events going on, I'd help her with that. Um, then I had gotten reached out to, I had seen the East Cop Snobs thing uh -huh. and um, knew how successful the macaroni kid site was and I thought well I can do that and mm -hmm. start making some income off of ad sales so they would I would reach out to restaurants and different vendors and just say hey I've got this targeted audience and um, you know would you be willing to pay for me to post um, about your business right um, and any discounts you're doing and it didn't bring in a ton of income in the beginning it took a while to grow that site Mm -hmm. um, and now it pretty much just kind of sustains itself, yeah. um, and kind of, yeah, that one's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. And so, so then, um, I know your kids are in to acting yes. and, and they're doing a ton of other things, which is awesome. So yeah. what made you get into the PR business? All right. So I, I mean, I've been in it for 15 years um, and always had worked for somebody else. And when the mm -hmm. kids began um, to act, they, in their beginning years with uh, East Coast Talent, they weren't booking a ton. Right. Um, so it was fine to, to work for other people um, and do kind of these side, side jobs. But when they started to book a lot, 
I realized I want to be able to set my own schedule. I don't want to be held to anybody else's time right. frame. I want to be able to work for who I want to work with and when I want to work with them. Um, so I took all the skills and my degree and everything that I'd had in the past and just decided I'm going to start my own thing. I'll be my own boss, yeah. um, sign other actors, people that I want to work with. Um, and so to answer the first part of the question, we've been doing it for a really long time. It's, mm -hmm. this is our, my second year of just actually owning my own firm. Yep. Um, which has been super exciting. And the neat thing about it was the people that I was working for before, mm -hmm. um, were more of the well-known actors that were being, uh, transported here to film so they right. were the LA actors right um, or being a unit uh, publicist for an actual production so in that case you're in charge of um, press for the actual production and multiple people it could be multiple actors and producers and you're in charge of a lot of people um, the neat thing that's happened in the last several years in Atlanta is the boom not only of us being a location state but uh, um, them really to start to take notice of our talent and that mm -hmm. we're better than just you know the day player roles and these little supporting right. roles and they are starting to um book our talent for lead and supporting um, more and more constantly um across the board and i wanted to be able for people to have um especially starting out um, I don't sign anybody that's not represented. I will help mm -hmm. them and lead them into some in the direction of what to do and where to look. Um, but I'm really focused, especially this year, on working with people that are, already have um, an agent. Mm -hmm. um, and we really have seen some amazing growth with the people that we've worked with, even if they've only booked a commercial. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We're working on... Um, making sure that their headshots look great or make if they have a website that looks great their social media looks great mm -hmm. the casting directors have been really responsive to us um, and allowing us to to make um, pitches and suggestions even though everybody that we have is represented sometimes right. um, if they do a call for actors they might only send the, their top five or ten bookers uh, right, depending right. on how many they can submit and then so people are getting missed so we'll right. get a call and say hey we know you have some redheads mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe we miss anybody can you send over who you have um so they've been um, really receptive um to us and the press in atlanta is also taking note um to the fact that we're booking a right. lot more things um so the ajc just started a new um article that will be about influencers and actors oz magazine is doing a lot with us um good uh good day or good morning, um, Atlanta, or good day, Atlanta, sorry. Uh -huh. um, they're all starting to, to do more um, highlights on, on the projects that we're doing, which only helps Atlanta actors in general to highlight the fact that the talent is here, we're really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, been, it's a, been quite different than what I had done in the past, already working with well-established people, uh -huh. um, types of things that I was doing was a lot different. Uh -huh. um, it was a lot more, you know, beginning and hand holding and things like that with the market that I'm working with now. Um, but again, I'm getting to do a lot of that fun stuff because the, the actors are booking those big things. So we're right. just recently got those cops for red carpet gowns and doing red carpet and media training. And so we're getting, I'm getting back to the roots of getting to do that, the, the real PR fun yeah. work. <laughs> And you know what? I don't think we've said the name of your firm. What is the name of your firm? It's, it's called Abelita Burns PR. Um, okay. I'm Amanda Abelita. My business partner is Kelly Burns. So it's just our two last names. A lot of times, one, we look similar. So a lot of people think we're sisters or related. Um, or they'll think her name is Abelita and last name Burns. Or my name is Abelita and last name Burns. Uh -huh. um, but no. Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. So, okay. So I think it's amazing that you've grown so huge in two years. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you, uh, since we weren't able to do this live, I'm going to just ask you some questions, mm -hmm. kind of your advice to other moms sure. based on your experience growing this firm. And okay. so the first thing, um, 
And I hope she's listening to this because I just spoke to this with someone earlier today and she was telling me kind of what her vision was for her business. And it was just you know, to make a little small income. And I told her she needs to 10 times that vision. Yes. And so what would you say to moms who, you know, they think they just want to make a little income just to bring in a little bit, but you've done far more than that. And you've still been able to maintain the lifestyle that you wanted. Right. I, and I've, it's funny, I've had many, many moms come and have that conversation with me and I'll sit there and kind of brainstorm with them and they'll tell me what their idea is. And I, in a publicist's mind and the way our brains work, we're always kind of connecting the dots and yes. helping people think outside of the box and things they haven't thought of, or have you reached out to this person or so, um, having a mentor that's already um, doing it is always great. I'm always happy to answer questions as I'm sure you are for people that contact you. Um, But thinking big, think bigger than what your original plan was. If you were thinking about, you know, selling t-shirts on Mm -hmm. Etsy, um, then think about, okay, what if this did blow up and I want, can I do direct to garment shipping? Do I need to, what can I outsource? What, yes. what would I want my website to look like? Like think past the worry of how am I going to make this work and how are people going to buy it? All those little kind of beginning things yes. those are all important things. But if you set the goal for being a national brand, yes. and maybe it takes 10 years to get there, but that's your goal. Then it helps you to realize who you need to reach out to, to make that happen and who you need in your corner and who you need in your tribe and in your network that's going to continue to push you. Yep. Um, and I have people doing the same for me that are um, mentors of, of mine that are successful in business. And I think Oprah or somebody had said it, like surround yourself with people that you aspire to be um, and that motivate you and that are going to keep pushing you when things are slow or you know, you might get a bad review on something right. and you really, in the beginning, take that to heart. And the best thing I always tell people is let your work speak for yourself. Everybody's going to have something to say yes. about anything that you do. Everybody, every single business owner I've ever talked to, small or corporate, large, that's just part of it. You're going to have people that are jealous. You're going to have people um, that are going to want in on whatever it is that you're doing and and you have to be really careful about that to who you let in and who you share information with. Um, yep. I've been doing some writing of my own and some work on some development of some other projects. And I've had to start doing non-disclosures before I talk to people because mm-hmm. I've had a few people run with the idea to a different network and it gets uh-huh. picked up and like, so you do have to be really careful and protective of your ideas. Right. Um, but definitely surround yourself with people that believe in you are going to continue to motivate you and push you to think outside the box and big picture. I think that's a, that's a great point because, you know, I'm coaching women to help them to get their business up and going and push them to the next level. But I also have a coach and I tell people that um, I have a coach and, you know, she's been really pushing me outside of my comfort zone and making me do stuff I don't want to do. But right. it's all, right. you know, it's all about growth and we have to all, it's a full circle. And that's why I, I love having this group where women can support each other, Absolutely. Uh, especially as moms, because I feel like we need that. Uh, another, uh, uh, you, you raised the point and I want you to speak mm-hmm. to this, mm-hmm. taking action. Mm-hmm. So that a lot of times um, we have an idea and we might talk about it and we want to do it. But it seems so daunting. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that I'm all about is taking action. Mm-hmm. Do something every day, even if it's just 30 minutes. Take yep. action. So can you tell me, uh, tell everybody about how you formed this idea, but not just that, but your beginning steps to taking the action. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I jumped. It was very quick. Kelly and I had, both of our kids were in, at an acting school and I knew what her, her background, she was at the time was working for Delta um, in corporate marketing and did a lot of their commercials and worked with their in like talent relations Mm -hmm. um, and worked for a lot of big events, had done the Grammys, had done a lot of things. 
and I had been at a, um, I think it was a work, it was a kind of a conference, um, a producer's conference, and this particular studio had space, and her and I had always said, in the future, we should do something, we should do something, and never jumped on it, and we had this idea, and the space became available, mm -hmm. which is really scary, because, you know, it's money I hadn't planned on, on spending particularly right then. And it was one of those where I had to take action right then or it was going to go to somebody else. And I said, I called her up. I said, do you want to come look at this space? Let's see if it, you know, how we feel about it. And at that, I mean, we had our own kids that we were helping and, mm -hmm. a, and maybe two other people that were kind of on board when we were like, Hey, we're, we're thinking about do this Would would you be interested in us helping you um, and work with us and help grow this. And so we didn't, I didn't start out like bringing a huge client roster with me. It was completely from scratch and um, from people just trusting me and knowing me um, for a long period of time and, and taking that leap of faith with me that I would, you know, have their best interest at heart. But even just that space, I just took, we took action. We we're like, okay, we're going to sign. We're going to be in here. We're probably going to lose money the first couple of months. Mm -hmm. Um but we're going to pay this rent and we're going to, we started working on a logo and we started where we did everything kind of backwards where other people would have the, the name and the logo and like all of this stuff way prepared, way finished before even looking at a space. But the space to us was kind of that motive, that kick in the yeah, butt, yeah. that motivator for us to, to go. And so we did a lot of stuff kind of backwards and catching up. There was a lot of catching up um, in the first in the first half of that year of um and luckily we had people with us that were patient and understanding mm -hmm. and we're like we believe in you keep going keep doing this um but yeah we did it in a very backwards way <laughs> backwards way of starting a business but i don't know if that space hadn't come available to really right. push us right if we if it would have ever started that year or the next year because it was always just kind of an idea and I didn't, yeah. I didn't know how it was going to make it come to fruition yeah. or how any of it, like how really to make it work. Cause I'd always work for somebody else. And, um, so whatever, whatever motivates you or pushes you, and it might be something that's super uncomfortable and scary yeah. and you might have to get, you know, a loan or help yeah. or whatever it is. Um, but for me that, that, and for Kelly, I know that really, pushed us to work that much harder and that much faster because yes. um, you knew you had that did. <laughs> oh yeah yeah um and we knew yeah we knew like we have to get out there and hustle our butts off yes. because our husbands are going to kill us <laughs> if we don't make this work so it was definitely a driving force uh behind because I think otherwise like you said you can kind of get stagnant and you can kind of yep. be like I'll put that off for tomorrow or I'll do that next month I'll work on the logo later or whatever like we had rent to pay like we had yeah. to get contract we had to find an entertainment lawyer we had to get contracts ready we had all these things we're like we got to do it we got to do it now um but I'm not I I'm glad it was stressful and it was scary but I'm I not sure it would have happened any other way um, until until as quickly as it did so putting the money out you know mm -hmm. a lot of times basically you guys invested in yourself and this is mm -hmm. one of the things that we as women mm -hmm. don't do because you know well we've got well, for me I mean you, you've seen my Facebook and Instagram yeah. tennis tennis yeah. tennis all the time it's expensive so expensive and, um, yeah. you know my kids are also in acting and in mm -hmm. travel ball you know, so everything, every bit of money that comes in, I could put it out to the kids. Mm -hmm. That's what we yep. do with moms. Yep. And we worry about, um, I'm sure you were worried about the stuff that you could have been taking away from the kids, the stuff, the opportunities you could have been mm -hmm. taking away from the kids by committing to this. But we as women have to understand we must invest in ourselves. Absolutely. And you have done, You that. this is a perfect uh, you know, you, you didn't have the money, but you knew that once that money was on the line, you made it right. Work. Yeah. And I will tell you too, um, I felt very lost for those several years that we were here in Atlanta and I mm -hmm. wasn't working and wasn't bringing in income. Um, not that I wasn't 
really busy with the kids and that right. is a huge job. But I always, there was always that, and I'm sure I'm not the only mom or wife out there, but that, you know, husband's pain at all yes. and that guilt that you feel. And I just wanted to be able to contribute in some way, even if it was like paying for a dinner out a yes. couple nights a week or pay, paying yes. for gas. I wanted to be able to contribute something because I hated that feeling yeah. of I you know like I I just want yeah and his he has been so amazing and that first year we didn't really make any money um that first year because it all went into everything for the company um but he's he was just him being proud of me yes. was like payment enough him pushing me and being like I see your vision. I see what you're doing. I'm supportive of you. I'm supportive of this. Like, I can see that you're really passionate about it. I can see that this makes you happy. Um, so the money will come in eventually. Um, but now that it has, I can't even describe to you how amazing it feels to be able to contribute some part, whether it's, you know, groceries that week or gas yeah. or headshots <laughs> yeah. for the actor something how how empowering it makes you feel to know that that you can do that and that's a pushing factor for me to want to do better I always tell Sean I'm like my ultimate goal is to make more than you do yeah but he yeah. keeps getting these raises so instead of being like super happy I'm like oh now I have this new goal that I have to yeah. he's like you should be happy about this raise I'm like I am but my goal is to like out outdo you one day but um no, he's right. super proud and it's it's you do want to make sure that whoever your support system is knows that it is completely normal to not make a ton of money off in the first even two years of your business and to be prepared for that and if it does great and that's so amazing and what a success if it does but if it doesn't does it make you any less of a bit I mean it's you just you just keep going. You just keep going because yep. eventually. Well, the last thing I wanted to I wanted to point out is a really good point. And I actually just finished talking to somebody about this, which is you didn't wait till everything was perfect and the planets were aligned before you started. And that's another thing that we as women we we want everything to be perfect. We want all right. the parts to be in a row, and so we can end up paralyzed. You know, because I was talking to someone earlier. Who has a business but she felt like she had to have her website up she had to have you know a press kit they have to have all yep. the stuff and i i want to go bring it back to just take action again yes. action. absolutely it's all about action actually it um and you don't not it's never gonna be the perfect the perfect time like there's all there's always there's always something that's that's going on that's gonna deter you from from taking the jump or the leap so when I'm in it when I see that I'm getting overwhelmed mm -hmm. and that's why it's great to if you don't have a business partner and you're doing it on your own um which is fine but to have somebody there that can see when you're kind of mm -hmm. drowning and need to come up for air where you can be like I need you just to take the reins for a minute that might be answering emails to um you know, people that are buying from you or whatever it is, but definitely you don't need all those little things, the website and the press releases, yep. and all those are kind of icing on the cake. They're obviously, you know, great. And you want to get to that point, but you can have a landing page for a while right. and Instagram and Facebook are such a great free uh, resource that businesses should be taking advantage of. Um, and I, quite frankly, our Instagram page has a lot more engagement than, than our Facebook and our, right. or our website um, does. So, and it's free and you just, it's a great way to interact um, with potential fans, followers, clients. Um, yep. So that would be one of my biggest things is to get an Instagram page started, yeah, yeah. start following people that you um, like or in the same field so you can kind of yep. you don't want to copy what people are doing but kind of you know model your business on successes yeah. that they have had awesome yeah Amanda thank you so much and uh, the you. folks don't know how we've worked at getting this uh <laughs> getting this I know. Interview together I know. and I really appreciate you I know you're picking up your your baby and I appreciate you taking this time for us um 
if you have any last thing to say, and I'll make sure that I put your uh, your PR agency on the every place that I post. So um, anything, any parting shots to moms? Um, I w one, I think this is an amazing, amazing resource that you have for moms. I wish you would have been <laughs> around. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so thank you for what you're doing. I think it's incredible and we need to support each other as yeah. much as possible. Um, I think it would be great on this page for people to list what their businesses are so that we can go and follow it and would support. Be awesome. yes. um, you as much as possible. I love, I love to do that, especially around the, when people are selling things around the holidays. I like to buy local. And oh, yeah, that's a good people. idea. Um, but yeah, for everybody just to stay in contact and, and be that support. And if anybody ever needs a boost of confidence, you're more than welcome to reach out to me on, on Facebook or, or anything. I'm always here to help, to help in any way. And I'll, I'll so list all your, yes, yeah, uh, message me all your handles so I can make sure I will. I'm including those. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank and you for well, having me. See you later. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.